In this episode, we will discuss giving automated tasks narrow root privileges via the sudo command using the no password option. As a sysadmin, you'll likely find yourself in a situation where it would be useful to delegate root privileges to non-root users. There could be any number of reasons to do this. Let's say that we're working closely with a group of developers and they need access to restart HTTPD each time a code deployment is pushed out. Initially, this will be a manual process, but the hope is that it can be automated. Giving the group root access would be overkill, since all they need to do is restart HTTPD. Luckily, this is a well-understood requirement, and the sudo command was built with this in mind. The sudo command allows a permitted user or group of users to execute super user commands as defined by a configuration file. What is so great about sudo is that you can define very narrow root access with the added bonus that there's built-in logging. With these requirements in mind, let's look at a live demo. I've configured an example virtual machine with a deployment account, and this deployment account will be used by our developers to push their code deployments as well as restart HTTPD via the sudo command. Right now I'm logged in as the deployment account, and I want to show you what it looks like when I try to change the state of HTTPD as a non-root user. Let's run etsy init.d HTTPD, and you'll be given a listing of the supported commands. I should point out that in this demo I'm using CentOS, so your output might look a little different. However, the overall theme of the episode should work across all distros. Okay, so you can see we have many commands to choose from. Let's try to check the status by running HTTPD status. So HTTPD is off right now. Let's try and turn it on by running HTTPD start. As you can see, we're able to execute the init script, but there is a bunch of failures when it tries to change the state. Same goes for stopping the service via HTTPD stop. This is ultimately because we need to be root for this to work. Well, this is a good starting point since we have our requirements and a problem to fix. And through the magic of video editing, I've changed accounts from the deployment account to the root account. Before we begin editing files, I should mention that you can always refer to the manual pages for the sudo command and its configuration files. As I pointed out in episode 19, you can run man-k and a search term, which will search the manual pages for a keyword. Let's go ahead and do this for the sudo command. Okay, so we have several man pages that look interesting, specifically the sudo command, vi sudo, and sudoers. The sudo command can be used to execute commands as the super user like we talked about earlier. The vi sudo command is used to edit the sudoers file. The good thing about this versus your favorite editor is that vi sudo does a syntax check before saving the file. Finally, there's a sudoers manual page that talks about the configuration file syntax, which can be really useful for finding different syntax patterns. Okay, so let's use vi sudo to edit the sudoers file and add entries so that the deployment account can stop, start, and restart HTTPD. I'm just going to paste the lines and then explain what they do. These first couple lines are not required, but I often add them for the sake of figuring out where the requirements came from. So if there was a help desk request or something similar, which outlines the requirements, I'll put in a couple comments so there's some traceability. This is especially important when you have multiple sysadmins running around. So let me just explain what the overall theme is with these lines. The first value here defines the user or group of users we want to apply this rule to. In our case, the deployment user will be the one running the commands. The second value defines the machines the command can run on. In my many years as a sysadmin, I've never had to use anything other than all. I guess this would be used if you deploy one master sudo file across a large cluster of machines and need to lock things down based off of host names. The third value defines the account to be used. In our case, we want to execute the commands as root. The fourth value is interesting in that we're telling sudo not to prompt us asking for a password. This is important because if the developer group wishes to automate this via a script, they don't want to be prompted for a password. Finally, we provide the command that the deployment user is allowed to execute. You will notice that I've defined the command arguments as start, stop, and restart. I've done this because if you leave these off, it tells Sudo that the user has blanket permissions to run this command with any arguments. For this reason, it is good practice to limit the command line arguments to only the functionality you wish to allow. In our case, we want to lock this down to start, stop, and restart. Okay, so now that we've made our changes, let's save the file. And once again, through the magic of video editing, I've changed accounts from root to deployment. 
So now let's run our commands again, but this time prefixing each command with sudo. As you can see, we can now start, stop, and restart HTTPD without being prompted for a password. Let's try running the status command via sudo so that we can compare allowed commands versus undefined ones. You will notice that we're prompted for a password and ultimately denied access because the command was never defined in the sudoers configuration file. So at this point we've effectively completed the user's request by adding entries to the sudoers file. But before we end the episode there's a couple things I wanted to point out. Depending on your distro, you might have a directory called etc.sudoers.d, where you can package up your custom sudoers lines into a nice little file. This can be handy if you have a large sudoers file and you want to break it apart into smaller manageable chunks. One final thing before we end, earlier in the episode I talked about sudoers leaving an audit trail. Again, it depends on your distro, but my sudoer commands are logged to var log secure. Let's quickly take a peek. As you can see, we have the allowed commands and also the denied one. All right, that concludes this episode. Thanks for watching. If you would like to get notified about future episodes, please subscribe to my mailing list. You can do this by going to the Get Notified link in the header and entering your email address. Have questions, comments, or concerns about this episode? What about episode ideas? I'd love to hear your feedback, either good or bad. Shoot me an email. Justin at sysadmincasts.com